Hi, my name is Monty Tesson with Coda Bears. Today we will be covering Epicor Mobile Access. Before we can even start this, you need to have someone install the Epicor Mobile Access onto the server. The directions can be found in Section 5 of the Epicor 10 Supplemental Install Guide. Once the Epicor Mobile Access has been installed on the server, we need to also check to make sure that the user has, availability, or has the ability to be able to see it. So if we go into the user account security, I'll go into my account, we go into options. There are two sets of permissions that are going to be needed here. First off, we're going to need the developer. The developer is going to need customized privileges. It's going to need the dashboard developer. And he's also going to need allow mobile access. If the person is simply the user, or the end user of the uh, mobile access, if you want to look at it, they need to have the allow mobile access and potentially even the allow Epicor web access. So, With that started, let's go create a new BAQ. create a new BAQ. The one thing we need to be worried about here is the shared. If we come in here, we put in, we search for the customer table. Put in the fields, customer ID, customer number, name, address, city, state, zip. How about the secure uh, sales rep code, the territory? And just for fun, let's put in the change date. Let's sort it by customer name, city, and state. If we analyze it, everything looks okay. Test it. We're getting data back. Let's save our thing. Now let's create a dashboard. One thing that I like to do when I create mobile dashboards is I like to have some sort of way to determine visually when you're looking at the dashboards in the list of which ones are mobile, which ones are not. In this case, I, I tend to put in a dash M underneath it. The reason why I don't put it in the description is because the description is used in a, several, in a couple locations. The description is going to be available on the dashboard itself, and it's also what is going to appear on the mobile access site. So on this type, let's just put let's put something in here. Customer, customer uh, list. I'm going to target the mobile device, and when you do that, you'll see that this down here changes to mobile navigation from advanced search. We'll get to that in just a second. So now we go to mobile. Okay, come over here, we add a query, we're going to add the query that we had in here. I'm going to leave everything the way it is for the moment, and hit OK. Now, the th one thing you'll notice is customer list is the same as the description we have here. And in this case, here is the summary for this, which we don't particularly like. I don't like that rolling over like that, so I'm going to change this so that this says results. That's all I'm going to change in that. We're still going to display everything else. Customer list, results, it also appears up here. 
Save it. Now let us add the tracker. We clear everything. We want to search babe by name and by state. So let's do the name, but let's do with a start with. And the state, since it's only two characters, we'll leave that as an equal. So we hit OK. Nope. Look, again, I forgot. It rolls over. Let's go back over here. Let's change this so that it says filter. Hit OK. Now it says filter. All right. One thing you're going to notice here is that in order to go back and forth, you need to use, you're going to need to modify or, or use these buttons in order to navigate through the system. Uh, the way it's currently set up, you'll come in as, to the customer list, the results for it, and you have to go to the right in order to get to the filter. That doesn't particularly work for me. I'd rather go in to the filter and then be able to go to the right to get in there. So in the meantime, we need to change the order. So we go to that mobile navigation over on the general tab. We grab the tracker, we move it up. We move the tracker above the grid. Validate that our jumps. The tracker goes to the results. The results goes to the filter. Okay, those are correct. So we come back. We hit save. There we go. Now we have the filter first, and then we go to the results. Let's save this. Let's just put in something to make sure that we're returning data. Look at the lists. They're from California. Sweet. All right. Now that prove that's working, we need to deploy it. So we go up to deploy the dashboard. You notice that you can't test the application there. You need to test it in there. We need to generate the mobile ac application. We need to generate the mobile application. Check the available from mobile menu. Hit deploy. Hit OK. Again, the description is customer list. So let's go look and see where let's go look on the menu to see where it is hiding. Okay, now remember that was called customer list. So on the mobile menu, this is under processes, you'll see one called customer list. That's the one we just created. So you'll see it's in the list, so it's ready to go. So let's open up our emulator. We are looking at an emulator here. Now, in order to get this, uh, this is a Chrome product. You can get in there. You can go ahead and do this yourself if you want. There are ways to get to this. You go to the tools, more tools, developer tools. You'll get to this screen. You hit the toggle device mode, and you can select whichever device you're actually targeting. Also, the default on your mobile screen in order to get it to show up is HTTP colon double forward slash your server name in this case the CB dash Epicor 10 and then Epicor mobile access that will get you to this screen right here in this case I'm going to type my name log in Go in here, oh, here's our customer list. And let's do California, we're gonna search. We go in here and look. We have the same two that we had in there before. If we go back to the list, we clear, let's see anything that starts with an A. There's a couple of them. You'll notice in the list here as well, in, these, in this grid, you can sort ascending, you can sort descending, just like any other grid that you have in here. You can also do updatables. In this case, let's refresh it. This is simply a test one that I created. Uh, it's created using the same updatable ways you've done before. 
uh, this one has a customer list and then a contact list that we have associated with it. So in this case, let's go in here. Let's go into Addison. We select him. We go over here to the right. We have a different list. Uh, ha ha, here we go. I don't believe his middle name is Jim Bob, so let's change it. We're going to press the edit button. Come over here to Jim Bob. I believe his middle name starts with an M. We'll leave it at that. We go over here. We hit save. Let's go back to the list. Let's check a different customer. Oops, that customer doesn't have anybody. Wait, let's go back into Addison and look. We have Smith, and look, it did save, and it's ready to rock and roll. Okay, a couple of gotchas here. Um, an Epicor 905-700B, uh, combo boxes and date selections do not work. Uh, it was supposed to be fixed in 701 something, but I uh, have not had the experience to see if that. In this case, there are date functions. Here, let's look. I believe it's an exp in an expedite sales orders here. There are date selections. You can hand type them or you can actually select it. This one doesn't have, we don't have the Epicor 3 database loaded, so that's why that's not going to function. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good day.